I've gotten asked quite a few times if there was a hand grain mill to recommend. And unfortunately, even though I have been grinding my own grains, milling my wheat making bread for a decade, I have never actually tried a hand mill that I could recommend to everyone until today. So today I have a really good friend who let me borrow her hand mill and we're going to be reviewing today the roots and branches hand grain mill so stay tuned Hey everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia. Today, as I already said, we're just gonna be doing a review of a hand mill that a friend of mine let me borrow so I could review. So this is not an unboxing because I didn't get it. I even had to get the manual off of the internet to look over it and everything so that I could review it for y'all. But this is gonna be my honest initial opinions of a hand mill. I know for me, mainly what I'm looking for is the ability for a mill to grind um, predominantly wheat berries because that's predominantly what I do. And I wanted to mill, see if it mills fine enough where I can still bake my bread in a grid down situation or if I don't have electricity or anything like that. So before I show you how it works, let's just talk a little bit about this mill and compare it to if you actually have an electric grain mill. Um, so again, this is the Roots and Branches Deluxe Grain Mill. They do have another one, but this is their Deluxe Grain Mill. It says VP, VKP 1024, that is the mill that we're gonna be doing. And of course, I will be listing this and everything else that I talk about in the description box below. So be sure to check it out there for all the links to all the things. So just a brief overview about this grain mill according to the manual um, is that it is able to, you are able to adjust the settings from fine to coarse. Now again, I have not tried yet to see how fine it is or how coarse it is, but we will certainly, certainly be doing that. One thing about this mill that I noticed is there is an actual motor that you can purchase um, and a separate motor that you can purchase to attach to where the handle goes. That way you can actually have it motorized. You just plug it up and you have a motorized mill. So that's pretty cool because not all mills have that option um, unless you rig up something yourself, but there is an actual motor that you can purchase separately. It does come separately to this. Another great thing I saw about it is this is only about a hundred bucks um, and, and it's in stock, which a lot of mills are not in stock right now. Um, I found this one on Amazon for a hundred bucks and the additional motor to the mill is 60 bucks. So for $160, you can have an electric mill if you choose to or a hundred bucks for a hand a hand mill so for 160 dollars for an electric mill that's not bad at all considering most electric grain mills like your wonder mill your neutral mill your mock mill um, things like that go for well over 300 dollars. so if you're looking for a budget grain mill and you really want to start milling your grains the the price is is very good for these now to um, put some clarification on the difference between this electric type motor and one of those like my wonder mill that I have that is in a true electric grain mill obviously the electric grain mills are a much powerful motor um, according to the specs the wonder mill has a 1250 watt motor so 1250 watt motor the motor that you get for the for the roots and branches deluxe grain mill is a 90 watt motor so a huge difference so do not expect if you put the motor on the roots and branches one that it's going to be as powerful as a wonder mill or a neutral mill because it's not um, but at least it is motorized and especially if you're in an off-grid situation and you're really needing to watch your power because you're on solar power or generator or whatever it is, there's a huge difference between 1250 watts and 90 watts. Um, I mean, you can go to practically almost batteries with 90 watts very easily as opposed to 1250. Um, again, one of the main reasons that I have not purchased a hand mill is I'm not sure which one to buy really. I kind of wish I could try them all before buying them. But also for us, um, we're usually set up where if need be, we probably have enough power to plug in my electric mill if I needed it. But I still definitely want a hand mill for 
just in case situation, or maybe I just don't wanna use up what electricity or what power means I have for my grain mill if I have a hand mill that I can use. So oh, let's go ahead and get this set up. I actually do have to turn the camera around and I'll tell you why in a minute. So we can start reviewing this Roots and Branches Deluxe Grain Mill. So here I am looking like a little child at my bar area, which is where I actually have to set up um, this mill. How it works is you do need to put it on a lip to a counter and my counter spaces are like, comes off maybe this much. I mean, barely any at all, except in this bar area. This is the only place in my kitchen that I can attach this. So keep that in mind, check out your counters before buying something like this that goes onto your counter. So either make sure you have a very sturdy table or um, good counter spaces for it to sit on. So that's the biggest thing. Now to check out this mill. As you can see, we have the hopper and all of these pieces do come apart. So we have the hopper where we put the grains. This is where it actually you adjust for coarseness and you can actually completely take this off. And this part, we have to unscrew it from the handle. So the part that actually grinds the grains, that comes out as well. Now do know nothing here is dishwasher safe according to the manual. So also keep that in mind. You will want to um, manually hand wash everything if you need to wash it. So one thing to know, um, to mention is whenever I take this off, this confused me at first because you think that it's supposed to go in one of these holes. It doesn't. Um, you actually just pull this back a bit and then you just screw it on here. And if you were to read the manual, you would know that. But just know that was a bit confusing for me before I downloaded the manual, wondering how I thought I broke it. Oh no, how do I attach it? So there's with that, and then we just have our handle. Now again, if you get the motor, the handle comes off and the motor attaches back here in the back. Now, according to the manual, this holds four and a half cups of grains that you can then grind. And of course, always read the manuals when you get things um, to clean it. Um, they say when you first use it, you want to grind some grains and then discard the flour just in case there's any bit of extra machine metal type shavings that might have accidentally got stuck in here. So keep that in mind. Also, as with many grain mills, to clean it out. If, you, if they feel like you've gotten clogged and stuff, you grind some white rice. Again, these are all things that are in the manual. So just something that you always wanna check out. So now let's actually try grinding some grains. This is my very first time doing it manually. So this should be fun. So with this one, we're gonna get a bowl. So I'm gonna attach it here. And then I'm just gonna use my most used grains, um, which is generally my hard red wheat berries. And I have it on the finest setting. Cause again, usually when I'm doing this, it's for bread and I want to make fine flour. So let's see how this goes. We have one, two, three, four, and a half, like they say. So let's do about four and a half. So I'll go ahead and tell you now that I do like how it has a large hopper. Um, I have seen some that maybe only do a cup. So four and a half cups is actually a pretty good size. So I already like that. And now let's start grinding these up. I can already tell this is going to take forever. So I'm gonna mill up um, my usual eight cups of hard, wet, of hard wheat berries and let's see how long it actually takes me to grind that much. Should be fun. <sighs> Y'all, I'm never gonna be done. <laughs> This is a milling that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. <sighs> All right, y'all. <sighs> I did it. And it took me 30 minutes. And this is only half of what I need <laughs> for baking my two loaves of bread that pretty much my family needs every single day. 
30 minutes. Now, funny thing is here, I'm staring at where it says, not for use by children. <laughs> I'm not gonna let a toddler on this thing, but I will definitely be employing some of my older kids to do the rest of this for another 30 minutes besides they're out there eagerly eagerly awaiting to try this out themselves so as far as i can tell i like it this is actually fine flour you can see um on my hands it's a little that powdery flourness so this looks to be very good flour for bread baking i really don't I don't see much of a difference at all between this and my nice Wonder Mill electric grain mill. Now, one thing I did notice is as I was doing this, this part um, got a little loose at times. It didn't seem to affect really how fine it was grinding, but I noticed it kept loosening up and I kept tightening it a little bit. Very minor thing. Again, it never started coming out coarse. Um, I just noticed it started. So maybe I tightened it up too much and, that, and it was adjusting itself. I don't know. But that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing, um, in the manual, every part of this unit, you can order replacement parts for. Um, so we're talking the hop, the hopper, the, uh, the clamp down system, the grain shaft in here, the knob, the handle, everything except the base part of this. So if, because on the outside here, the red part, it is made of plastic. So if that cracks or anything, everything else is made of metal, but the hopper and this outside thing and the handle red part is made of plastic. So if I was to keep this for, and mainly using it for grid down situations, I would actually order extra parts of everything to have on hand just in case. And that is something that you can do with this model is, so if this hopper breaks, you don't have to replace the whole thing. You can just order the hopper part from their website, um, as well as this, if you need a new shaft, if you need a new handle, if the clamp down unit, say it gets too loose or whatever, you can replace that. So I do like that because again, hand mills, most people are looking at them for a prepper type situation. And it's really good to be able to have spare parts for it and not have to replace the entire unit so you can keep spare parts on hand other than that i i like this mill um now i'm actually going to try to do the coarse grind to see how coarse of a grind that we have because i know i'm thinking of things like if i needed to do animal feed and all i had were grains and even though you could probably soak these you know things like that but occasionally for whatever reason i might want to grind up some grains so let me grab some a different bowl and let's try the course setting to see how that goes and we're also going to try throwing in some beans in here just kind of get an idea of how it handles some grains Okay, so I actually have, I just put some red beans and some more hard red wheat. One thing I did not mention is I noticed looking in here that it actually still has a few wheat berries in here. It looks like about maybe two teaspoons and not a lot of wheat berries, but oh, okay, now it is. Now it is actually coming out a bit. I just, as soon as I started adjusting this, it came out. So just look at that just to make sure. And I noticed when I started adjusting that they started coming out. But now we're gonna switch this to the coarsest setting available without having this completely fall off oh okay so there it went fall off so let's adjust it back and again the reason i'm looking at okay so some flour gets caught up in there and the reason why i want to just see how coarse this goes is you know for animal feed purposes so if i've got chickens or maybe even horses or cows to feed and they may not want to consume whole intact grains especially if you have like baby chicks um i'm having difficulty here okay let's try this oh okay so we do have some flour in there we're gonna get that out that's probably why it wasn't going okay so if i had like baby chicks or something like that that needed something and the flour sometimes is just too fine for them i may want it some crack grains okay so that feels good so let's dump this in here and now let's see what the course setting is so let me dump this flour out Oops. Okay, so I did not do it. Okay, so let's, yeah, I gotta stick the handle out. Okay, so it does take some trial by error, it looks like. So let me do this a little bit more. I had it, I guess I had it screwed on too loose. So let me do this. All right. Oh, now it's too fine. You know, we're gonna throw this back in. Okay, we're gonna try this again. 
gonna it doesn't seem to really like to feed it in for this course of items but i mean it is working um it looks like just a bit of trial and error to get the setting correct and there are times where it gets a little a little stuck okay now that is probably where i would like it to be for more cracked stuff just a little bit more okay so as you can see it's a bit trial and error <laughs> to get a coarse setting right so this is not fine fine flowers you can see those are the flex of beans and it was giving me a little bit of a hard time doing this and i'm not sure i have a feeling it's probably more because of the beans maybe having a bit harder difficulty to get in there so something to consider um so if you're wanting a hand mill specifically for just cracked grains may need to just fiddle with it a bit um because again this is still still kind of flour not truly cracked grains it is a coarse flour um you know and i would you could certainly feed this to chicks you could do that but i don't think like horses or um those type of animals would necessarily like this so there's just something to consider i'm still going to fiddle with it a little bit just to see if i can get it better but i have been working on adjusting this and again i think it might be the beans that are kind of giving me a hard time um, because i did not have this like it feels like the grain it's not going down into the sh into the um grind shaft because all of a sudden the handle will be very smooth unlike whenever i was just grinding it into flour it was a constant i could tell it was it was grinding every time i turned it so something to consider maybe not the best for the beans again these were red beans that i was doing so something to consider but otherwise for flour not bad not bad at all um it looks like it grinds it into a fine flour i didn't have to run it through again i am going to try and bake bread with it but from what i can tell that flour looks like it came from my electric grain mill so i think it's pretty good so again i will link everything down below um, of where you can purchase this again i did check today and it was in stock um, on amazon even a uh, hundred bucks for this another sixty dollars for the motor if you wanted that so do you know it definitely is a workout <laughs> again it took me 30 minutes just to grind half of the of the wheat berries i need for flour for my bread i'm gonna get my kids in here to my older kids to get in here and do the other half um so that we can make bread for the day so uh, mad kudos to all the women of the past and even children and everyone in the past who had to rely on these every single day and there's still even people in this world that still rely on hand grain mills to provide their daily bread and mad kudos to you you have arms of steel <laughs> and possibly in need of rotator cuff surgery but you know who knows so i hope this was helpful um I don't know if I'm still going to be looking around for hand mills myself um, to see which one. But hey, a friend of mine had this and I was crazy excited to try it out. And it's a good one and a good price too. $160 if you want it electric or $100 bucks for a decent grain mill. Um, again, just make sure that you do have a good counter or table that can handle the clamp on here. Um, and like I said, this was the only place that I had <laughs> that could do it and I'm thankful I had it. Um, but other than that, it's, it's a pretty good one. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe below. I definitely hope to be able to do more reviews of equipment in the future. Um, so if that sounds like something you would like, then hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button on this video if you are very thankful that we have electric grain mills today because I know I am. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week. Bye.